On June 22nd, 2013, a Saxon from Germany came visit me and offered me a five Reichsmark Nazi silver coin from his grandfather from 1934, with swastikas on it and all, as a present to me. So here on the side we can see those typical Nazi letters and uh, it says Gemeinnutz geht vor Eigennutz that means service goes for self goes before self uh, with those arabesques here it looks like serpents to me and there's a funny thing in the middle I think it's a star and um, yeah so I'll show it again so these were those typical Nazi mottos you know like Arbeit macht frei meaning work makes you free you know which is a nice motto for the slaves constructing the pyramids or the ones in uh, Auschwitz, uh, Birkenau, you know, um, having to work like pharaonic slaves and then die. Um, these are uh, slogans real typical for the Nazis and the pharaohs. Hitler and the Nazis first used his motto on February 24th, 1920 in a National Socialist Rally in Munich. On one side it shows some swastikas of uh, pharaonic origin. And it says Deutsches Reich, meaning the German Empire. And it shows the Roman pharaonic eagle of Ma'at. And it says 1934, five Reichsmark, five marks of the German Empire. Reich, it means empire. And if I turn it around, it shows at the place where the tail is of Ma'at. It shows the uh, Fleur de Lis which is a symbol of the uh, the aristocracy and it is it represents the uh, the pharaonic lotus on the river nile it does and on the flip side it uh, shows an obelisk like a uh, church yeah. where it says 21st of march there's the triangle of the Freemasons. You see? It shows an obelisk like church called Die Garnisonskirche or Church of the Garnison, which is a very funny name for a church, insinuating the church as a garnison or an army and Christianity as a war. Uh, against humanity and if you consider the Horus matrix and reason for all these wars it does fit connected to this church of wars it says March 21st 1933 with two swastikas around it around 1933 as to honor the year of the beast with pharaonic symbols March 21st is the date on which Hitler's rise to power was celebrated after he became the German Chancellor on January 30th, 1933. It's called the Day of Potsdam, the Tag von Potsdam. Just as it's called the Day of Potsdam commemoration coin. Yeah, Mr. Hitler is somewhere in here on the day of Potsdam uh, where the obelisk is uh, shaking hands with uh, Mr. von Hindenburg.
and uh, on the left side there's the Nikolai Church which is an evangelic church with an obelisk you see that was very important so normally the inauguration of a German Chancellor should have taken place in the German Reichstag in Berlin but as the pharaonic German aristocracy wanted it to take place in Potsdam near Berlin and the very heart of the Prussian monarchy with many obelisks around for a pharaonic ritual as in the old days along the river Nile. They deliberately burned down the Reichstag on the night of February 27th till the 28th to have a good reason for not having their man and reincarnated pharaoh inaugurated under the powers of the German people at the very symbol of the German democracy. And for the Reichstag uh, fire arson they had their Patsy ready. Uh, here he is, Mr. van der Lubbe. And um, just as uh, Lee Harvey, the Patsy, or these uh, 19 Muslims at 9-11, well, they always have it ready. And of course, octagon of the Templars, they are aristocratic, just as uh, the, the main drive behind the Nazis, and they were the main drive, as here in Potsdam, and the reason for the uh, Reichstag's fire um, is the aristocracy, and they are pharaonic, and they went into hiding in Freemason lodges. They're the ones, all right. And Switzerland Octagon is their biggest base. But under the pharaonic magic of the imperial aristocracy, at their main church next to the castle of Sans Souci, or the No Worries Castle, as the French word indicates, where not even the name is German, and neither the idea of two world wars and the extermination of the Jews was in fact a German idea. It was aristocratic, pharaonic. So this obelisk here is standing at the very entrance of the Sans Souci Castle, which is all next to each other the um, uh, where Hitler was inaugurated and where he, he shook the hands with the uh, the former uh, Hindenburg uh, Chancellor uh, it was a pharaonic ritual uh, it really was and I show you some more things so here we can see the Garnison Church on uh, on my coin here with the entrance here with some uh, Nazi eagles on it and f it, it's full of uh, hieroglyphs here it's really ancient so there are at least four obelisks and probably many more around this place where Hitler was inaugurated by the aristocracy and I'm going to show you what's inside this church and um, it's real horrible the aristocracy got their fingerprints all over the Nazi movement and the Second World War. And I know why. So here's the uh, Sans Souci or No Worries Castle. Well, you can see you won't have any worries here of uh, Frederick the Great. And he is, in fact, buried in this church, which is on the silver Nazi coin. And this is the real reason uh, why the uh, the Garnison's church is on this coin. And this castle, it, it's all very near, in a few minutes walk, just next to this Garnison's church, the place where all the obelisks are, where Hitler was uh, inaugura inaugurated in Potsdam, which is not in Berlin, and is not the Reichstag, where he should have been inaugurated, why is the real reason? The aristocracy. And look at all the obelisks. All the trees look like obelisks. Uh, here it's, it's really too much. It's full with pharaonic stuff here, inside and outside. I just show you a couple of things, but it's, this is pharaonic. And this is uh, the drive behind the Nazis in the Second World War. That's, that's the ones who did it. 
So uh, here inside the castle, it's it's amazing. Look at it. We can see two times the sun hieroglyph. Here it is, or many more times probably. There it is, and here. And uh, of course, their base is Octagon, as I told you before, Switzerland. That's their base, where all the money is, where it's a safe place, and all the caves and the mountains. That's their base. But this is part of it. This is part of it. And uh, the place where um, Potsdam is, it's uh, it's full of lakes. A lot of water, like in the old times at the River Nile, so well that's why they burned down the Reichstag. And on that very day, when Hitler shook hands with von Hindenburg, another aristocrat of pharaonic descent, the Heimtücke Gazette or the German Patriot Act was put in power on the day before on March 20th, 1933, the opening of the first concentration camp Dachau near Munich. So this coin celebrates the true beginning of the aristocratic Nazi dictatorship of the pharaohs from Octogon. Just as the National Socialist Movement was a workers' union from the people, of which all the real German leaders were murdered by Hitler and his aristocrats during the Night of the Long Knives in 1934. After that, it was all led by guys with a von in front of their names, all arist aristocrats. Why March 21st? Because that was the very same date of the first German Reichstag of the German aristocratic empire on March 21st 1871. This Nazi war church uh, which is called the Garnison's Church is the church of the pharaonic aristocracy. They had been visited by all the royals throughout history as Tsar Alexander I, Napoleon Bonaparte whom you can see here visiting the grave of uh, Frederick the, uh, the Great and Emperor Frederick the Great has even been buried in the church. Just look at the Freemason checkboard configuration. <clears throat> and Frederick the Great or Friedrich der Große, Friedrich der Zweite, Friedrich the Second, he was a Mason indeed. He spoke only French, I don't know if he could even speak German, and the Germans called him Fritz the Faggot for his homo activities with Mr. Fredersdorf, for example, and with many others. And uh, here he was buried after the war because the, uh, the war church, the, the Garnison's church, was destroyed after the Second World War. So they put his remains uh, after the war in this lovely castle here. It's called the Hohenzollern Castle. The Emperor Frederick the Great lived from 1712 until 1786 and he died at the No Worries Castle, Sans Souci, just next door. Well, look at the, the marvelous octagon sign he's having on his breast. I'd say it's, uh, it's a London copper. Look at the badge. Here he is. This is Octogon. Police. That's them, alright. They are the knights for the, uh, for the aristocracy. And it has a very funny sign inside. I can't really see what it is. The emperor was raised by a Swiss from Octogon called Nicolas de Begelin. Faggot Fritz and the Swissy from Octogon. I told you so, the Swiss always have their fingers in it, somehow. And sometimes even something more than just a finger. Fritz the Faggot ruled from 1740 until 1786, almost 50, 50 years of endless Prussian wars. So here we can read what kind of a 
violent, aggressive and sick person he was. Oh, Fritz the Faggot also was an active anti-Semit, as the entire Pharaonic aristocracy is. Therefore, Rudolf Hess, the second Nazi of this aristocratic Nazi dictatorship, gave Hitler a large pile of anti-Semitic correspondence by Fritz the Faggot, being one of the reasons, together with, the, with that other one, for Hitler having just one picture at the wall of the Führer bunker. Yes. Fritz the faggot was on the wall. Hitler was a very big admirer of uh, Frederick the Great. Well, let's call him Frederick the Great for, you know. Well, here's the painting of uh, Frederick the Great or Fritz the faggot, whatever, that Mr. Hitler had in the Führer bunker. Every, in, in every one of his offices, he had the uh, the painting of uh, Frederick the Great. Well, two mass murderers. There are indeed a lot of rumours indicating that Hitler himself was a queer. Homo Hitler and faggot Fritz. What a lovely couple from hell. And this unholy practice is indeed widespread within the aristocracy and the pharaohs, the ancestors. But Hitler was in fact a highly pharaonic initiate into the practices of sexual sublimination and its transformation of its earthbound energies into spiritual abilities and in this very case on the altar of evil. And here also in Berlin is the uh, the grave of the successor of Frederick the Great. His name is Frederick William II. <laughs> he was also a, uh, a Freemason Pharaoh. These were the friends of Mr. Hitler. He was one of them. Well, let's pretend he was Frederick the Great, who was a grandson of George I of the British Empire, just as every US president is related to just one English king, apparently, except President Van Buren. Oh yes, the pharaonic aristocracy rules all right. Octagon is their base and the true the worldwide octagon blue army, their knights. Just as uh, Frederick the Great has the, uh, the octagon sign uh, on his breast, as I showed you before. So these American people found out that all the US presidents, they are related to just one king who lived uh, in the 12th century. <laughs> we are ruled by octagon and the aristocracy who are pharaonic and who are hiding in Freemasonry lodges uh, under the, uh, the um, democracy banner. <laughs>